Hi everyone. So, hello everyone. So, my name is Pratyaksh Rastogi, and I welcome you all guys to uh, my online webinar. You know, for uh, you know, from All Did Me Neat, and I hope that you guys are doing good, and you all are fine and doing safe, and you are staying at your homes. Okay. So, I am really glad to see you guys on my online webinar session. So this is Pratyesh Rastogi and I am a biology faculty at NEET, uh, you know, for NEET at Altered ME NEET and I deal with both that is zoology and botany and uh, yes, so okay, I can see that one viewer has joined our session. So can I please just have an, uh, a hi from you, uh, your name so that this session can be interactive. Okay, moving ahead. First of all, I just want to make sure that my broadcast, my quality of my video and my audio is absolutely clear to you. If there is any glitch, please do let me know in the chat box so that I'll just correct it out. Okay. I hope you guys are good. And uh, yeah, so how is your preparation going on? I just wanted to ask, you know, I'm very curious about it. Because if I'm not wrong, so you will have your examination in the month of May or June, right? Most probably. So you must have been completed at least like 70 to 80 percent of your syllabus. You know, when I talk about all the three subjects, biology, physics and chemistry, I can see the viewers are joining in our session. Can you please just drop your names and from where are you so that I'll just say hi to you all. OK, yeah. So I was basically, you know, uh, supposing you all guys to just complete at least 70 to 80 percent by this time, because you have to complete your syllabus and then you have to revise all the chapters once again, right? In order to, uh, oh, okay. Hi, Purushottam. Okay, Purushottam is saying the preparation is going, going so bad. Okay, not an issue, Purushottam. Don't worry. I can understand that, you know, sometimes you do not have so much interest, you know, in studying and you just skip the timings, the schedule, but not an issue. Okay, be calm, be relaxed. What you have to do is, Go through the NCERT first, make a timetable, okay? And uh, you also, I, I hope that you are joined through our WhatsApp channel where you have the mentors available over there. So just ask them to prepare a timetable, a schedule for you and just follow that. And yes, the best tip would be just go through the NCERT so that you at least can get the basic knowledge from there, right? And when I talk about biology itself, so 90 to 95% of the questions in NEET exam, they will come from the NCERT directly. So go through NCERT, okay? Don't worry, just be calm and stay focused. And yes, go through all the video lectures and whatever study material being provided to you. Go through the test, okay? Join any test series you can. And yes, you'll be able to, yeah, you will be good to go, okay? So be relaxed, okay? So moving ahead, I can see other viewers as well. So can you please just drop hi or your names? So that, you know, let's make this session a little bit interactive so that I will also get enjoyed, you know, teaching to you. Okay. So next guys. So this is about my introduction. You can see the slide of, over the screen. So my name is Pratyaksh Rastogi and I am a physiotherapist by profession. That is a physical therapist. So, and uh, yes, I'm a teacher by choice. I really love to teach biology because I love to know about medical facts and to share those medical facts with the students and with the people around, right? So, and you know, my main, actually right now I'm doing some researches, uh, you know, in sports. Basically what I'm doing is I'm doing some researches in, you know, of, a, of an athlete into sports, like how their muscles, how their sh soft tissues actually work, you know, when we talk about sports participation, because you have to have a, you know, a good, built up or you have to have a good you know strength and endurance in order to participate in sports so yes the the structure or the you can say the functioning of the soft tissues must be very much accurate than that of a layman right than that of a you can say a ordinary person when we talk about a sports person basically so i'm doing some researches on that you will get the articles real soon okay so guys welcome you again and i'm happy that you joined my session so this is i just want to introduce you all to our altered me need what is uh, it actually about so guys first of all basically we provide we are an educational institution basically we are an online educational institution where we provide you the classes for your need and for your je examination okay so you can see over here like these are the all the classes and all the you know you can say the facilities which are being provided to you all first of all we deal with theory 
like you know uh, see theory there are two things theory and numericals so when we talk about biology so numericals are very very less right uh, you can say two or three percent maybe from the chapter genetics itself but rest will be theory only so you have to have a good hold over the theory right and for that we are the faculties which are available for you who are available for you uh, for physics chemistry and biology okay and uh, apart from that we also provide you study materials in the form of pdfs okay so you don't have to go anywhere you don't have to google everything you just be you know you will get everything in a pdf form like every knowledge for example in a chapter there are eight or nine concepts you every concepts will be listed in a precise and concise manner so that you can get a hold of you know the whole chapter i'm talking about then third will be we organize webinars like if you understand so right now if i'm teaching you i am online with you all so what i'm doing is i'm doing a webinar right over the web that is youtube and i am organizing my class so that you can understand and uh, you can take my class right so we do the same way for all the students what you have to do you all you all would be having the access to your youtubes and everything so just open your youtube and create you know click on the link provided to you for the classes and yes you will be good to go okay i can see that mathis uh, has written something what is that may i know uh, like mathis has written something so i didn't get it okay next guys we provide you homework so basically homeworks uh, again will be uh, you know available on our website which is altademy.online and over there you will uh, you know our homework in the form of mcqs will be available for you all so that you can solve those mcqs and you can rank or you can assess yourself okay like where actually you are lacking and where you need to improve yourself and in which concept you are actually a pro okay so you will be able to self evaluate yourself and we provide homeworks for every chapter for every session what we take then we have homework check facility in which our mentors will tell you will check they will check your homework and whatever mistake you will do they will you know just inform you right there and then okay you will get a notification from them maybe you know over our portals like our telegram group or whatsapp group or maybe on a call okay so yes so these are the facilities what we deal with you know when we are actually teaching our students then moving ahead guys uh, so yeah now if you talk about need specifically so for need students like those students who are actually aiming to be a doctor okay those who want to get admission into private and government medical colleges you know like if you have if you are actually giving need if you are going to give need that means your ambition should be to become a medical professional be it an mbbs an ayurveda or you know pursue any career in different different kind of streams right so for that what we are doing is right now we are we have designed some sub uh, subscription plans for you all we have uh, basically three plans which are available over our website right now for you all and believe me those all these all plans are very economic friendly for you all okay like see uh, when i was a student so i used to study in a very prestigious you know like institution like this only but my fees was like you know uh, like so much you cannot uh, you know like even right now you can see in the market that whatever bigger bigger institutions what we have they charge in lakhs they charge in you know a multiple of thousands but right now when i talk about altademy so we have very economic friendly uh, you know plans for you all so that you can easily afford all of them okay so i would like to introduce we have three plans basically the first will be light plan the second will be smart and third will be proficient plan okay when we talk about the light plans so we have these kind of you can see the green ticks over here beside the plans okay underneath the plans so you can see these are the again you will be able to access all of them we have interactive live classes right now i'm taking your class and i'm interacting with you all so i'm really glad and i'm happy to teach you okay so similar way you will also be getting classes for your other subjects be it physics chemistry and maths then we have structured courses and pdfs yes i told you that you all will be getting the study material from us then we have live test okay like there will be a point of time when every chapter will be completed when there will be a time for the revision only then we will also take your live test we will just ask you questions in our live uh, webinars and then you will be responsible to answer all of them then next we have physical notes okay 
we will also provide you like if there will be any advanced information needed in order to crack NEET or JE, then you will also be getting notes over there. We also do one-on-one -on -one mentorship. In one-on-one -on -one mentorship, what we have, see, we I I would like to reveal one thing over here. We have a WhatsApp group, okay, for for NEET and JE students separately. So what you can do the best is you can just join our WhatsApp group and you can be interacted with the mentors available over there. We have so many mentors. All the mentors are very helpful and they are very cooperative with you. If you will tell them that your situation, whatever problems you are suffering, whatever you know problems you are facing with your need schedule, with your need preparation, what they will do is they will just you know uh, first of all understand all the things and they will design you know uh, a timetable for you in such a manner where you will be able to complete your need syllabus within time. Okay, like for example, if I give you so. In biology, in biology itself, we have 38 chapters when we are talking about, uh, you know, your, uh, you can say 11th and 12th both. Okay. So 38 chapters, doing 38 chapters. Yes, I can understand is a bigger, big deal, but yes, you have to do it because you have to clear need, right? So how can you do this? You have to have a certain timetable, a schedule where you watch, you can follow and then you can manage every chapter, you know, uh, accordingly. So yes, you can just, you know, cooperate, you can just interact with our mentors available for you all. They are all present or over our, uh, you know, portals. We have a portal over the Telegram and we have, uh, you know, we are also, uh, you know, available over the WhatsApp. So you can just join wherever from you want. Okay. Then we have live, live doubt solving classes for you all. So yes. Okay. Once you will be ready with the chapter, once you will prepare the whole chapter, including theory, including numericals, including MCQs, then yes, we will also organize uh, the live webinars like this only where we will solve your doubts. Okay. You can ask your doubt and then I will solve it. Okay. Not an issue. Okay. Then we have mock test regularly. Yes. So if you would have seen one thing, if you have, uh, you know, if you have, if you have ever visited our website, which is alteredme.online for NEET and for JE both. So you would have seen that there are the tests also posted for every chapter what we provide to you, right? So why we are posting those tests so that you are able to better evaluate yourself. Where are you standing as of now? Would you, would you exactly be able to crack NEET or do you still need some, you know, time to prepare yourself? So how can you do this once you will, uh, you know, solve the questions, once you will solve the MCQs, right? And after that, you will be able to get, uh, you know, uh, like where did you lack and which concept or which uh, part of the chapter you need to uh, understand or you need to, you know, focus more into, right? For example, if I would talk about genetics, so you really need to focus on the, you know, the, the simple numericals what we have, for example, if, you know, if, if a dihybrid cross is given. Then you have, you should understand that how to solve that cross, how to uh, get the first filial and the second filial generation, right? So some students, what they do, they don't know how to solve those crossing, how to get the answer. So you need to, you know, be more focused into those because I had a webinar over that topic. And yes, you can go through that webinar. You can go through that video so that you will better be able to get access of all that information, like how to, you know, solve the crosses and, you know, in what way we can solve the questions related to the chapter. Okay. Also, the last thing what we have is additional special courses. So guys, once the time will arrive, you know, when, you know, because some students, they are not well prepared with their syllabus. So we also do have crash course for that. In crash course, we will uh, give you, you know, a revised information about everything, about every topic, every update related to NEET. So you will be getting everything. Okay. You don't need to worry. All you do, all you do need to, uh, you know, you need to do is just go through our website and go through the subscription plans, what I've explained to you. So in light, you will get the first four uh, benefits. Whereas in smart plan, you will get all the benefits, excluding the additional special course and in proficient plan, you will get all of them. So you can just visit our website. You can, you know, go through the, all the benefits. You can go through our videos available for you all. And accordingly, what you can do is you can just make up your mind and you can go with any of the plan what is suitable for you. Okay. Because some students, they are very much, they are, you know, very much comfortable with the syllabus. Some students, they are kind of confused from where to start and from where to end. And some students even have not initiated their studies. So not an all issue. Okay. What you have to do is just 
uh, you know, make a timetable, make a schedule from from now onwards only. Okay. Hi, hello, guys. So I can, I can see that the viewers are joining in. So can I just get a hi or your name in the chat box? Okay. Okay. Next. So guys, uh, for today's uh, for today's session, I have selected one topic for you, which is biotechnology and its applications. I'm not going to discuss the whole chapter over here, but I'm going to discuss a particular very important topic for you all, which will be, you know, <clears throat> okay, let's discuss this, uh, discuss it out. So the chapter's name will be biotechnology and the applications. Okay. And I have selected the topic, which is called transgenic animals and ethical issues in biotechnology. So I hope if you would have studied this chapter earlier or not. Okay. Uh, because this is a chapter of your 12th class and this is from unit biotechnology itself. So uh, yesterday when I took a webinar which is available on our YouTube channel called Alt, uh, Alt Demi Neat, over there I had discussed uh, you know the biotechnological applications in agriculture and biotechnological applications in medicine. Okay and for today I am going to be discussing transgenic animals and ethical issues in biotechnology. So if you know let's just uh, let me just brief it out uh, some portion of the yesterday's session because that session is also important and that is somehow linked with today's class okay today's topics so i'm going to discuss uh, the previous session uh, discuss from the previous session a little bit so actually what we had discussed it when i was talking about biotechnological applications in agriculture so what did what did i mean basically i meant that how can we improve our crop production how can we you know improve our agriculture how can we improve the production you can see that i have selected the points over here so why do we need to manipulate or why do we need to introduce the biotechnology into agriculture because we have to get good quality and good product good producing uh, crops right because crops have to be uh, of good quality like they should be healthy there should not be any disease in the crops and at the same time there should be a more production of the crop okay then i what i discussed it that we have to make plants pest resistant okay pest and insect resistant because if you can imagine if you agree with me there are a lot of microorganisms available all around right even right now i'm talking i am surrounding you know uh, like there are millions of microorganisms which are surrounding me at this time so similarly, when we are talking about crops, they are really prone, they are very sensitive to the microorganisms and they can be, you know, some microorganisms are beneficial to crops, whereas the other are very harmful. So the harmful ones can interact with the crops and they can really harm the crops in a very bad way, right? So in order to uh, protect our crops and in order to produce healthy crops, we have pest and insect resistant properties through which we can actually introduce biotechnology in order to uh, make the plant pest resistant okay when i'm talking about pest i'm talking about microorganisms let us say nematodes let us say the other microorganisms what we have you know nematodes is basically a part of your invertebrates okay and when i'm talking about insect resistant so insect uh, we can talk about you know the beetles or the other um, mosquitoes or you know the other other uh, worms we have which actually harm your crop production then third will be in order to produce plants which can withstand environmental issues so yes there are issues which can which can be created at any time okay for example drought can create drought can be caused at any time or we can say there can be a hyper salinity in the soil what do you mean by hyper salinity hyper salinity is nothing but increased amount of salt in the soil due to that increased amount right of salt Basically, there will be increased amount of minerals as well and a plant need adequate amount of minerals. If there will be very, very high amount of soil, then also, yes, plant can also uh, not withstand that. So with the help of biotechnology, what we can do is we can actually make the plant so the plant can withstand your, uh, you know, the environmental stresses what we have. Drought, flood or you can say uh, salin hyper salinity in the soil and many more. Last will be in order to produce tailor made plants. So, I explained yesterday as well what are tailor made plants. Tailor made plants are those plants which are actually manipulated by human beings with the help of biotechnological applications and tools so that we can uh, make the plant suitable for giving us the, you know, the most benefited product what we want. 
for example from some plant uh, we have to get more medicines in order to produce therapeutic drugs right so we can uh, get medicines from them in the form of chemicals in the form of other things we can also get rubber we can get resins we can get latex many things what we can get from the plant so if we are uh, you know if we are making that plant in such a way that the plant will produce the material what we want in a higher amount that will be called as tailor made plant okay we have actually manipulated the plant by and by our own with the help of gene manipulation with the help of any other biological biological tool or therapy okay so it will be a tailor made plant then next will be okay so now guys i would like to tell you that that's what the channel i'm talking about over our telegram we have the id which is called alt neat a l t neat so you can this is the qr code what you need to do is just scan this qr code from your phone and you can directly be connected to our channel you can see our channel we already have you know uh, like hundreds of uh, you know you can join us or the students join through our channel so you can do the same okay in order to be uh, you know in order to stay updated about all the you can say the live upcoming classes or whatever information we have for neat like dates pattern because if i'm not wrong so even the pattern is going to be different this year right so you all have to be very aware so that you can also practice that pattern like how to answer the questions in that pattern okay so stay focused and join our telegram channel right now and we all are available over there okay then the plants which are genetically modified are called yes it's what is gmo okay let me write it for you okay so if i would write gmo what is what does it mean genetically modified organism right so these are the gmos what we have so what is a genetically modified organism for example if we have modified any gene of an organism so that that modification will lead to you know uh, a human welfare that modification will will lead to you know uh, use to us for example if we are modifying any plant for our own use that plant will be called as genetically modified plant similarly if we are modifying any organism or organism genetically then yes that organism will be called as genetically modified organism okay then next what we have is okay so first of all guys this uh, you know we also have a youtube channel which is called altered me neat right now i'm taking a your class uh, through our channel only so you can just subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so that you can uh, be you know updated with all the uh, you know upcoming classes and information related to neat so just subscribe to the channel and you can hit the bell icon okay for the notifications then moving on what we have is okay so i explained yesterday about bt toxin what is bt bt is bacillus thurian genesis it's a kind of a, it's a bacteria which has a toxin uh, present into that the toxin is called bt toxin okay now what was the significance of that bt toxin that bt toxin was actually manipulated you know actually modified uh, into genetic terms so as to protect plants from insects from uh, you know like insects for example flies we have worms let me explain you how how so a bacteria which 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 has bt toxin so basically what it, what it has is that bacteria actually has an inactivated form of this protein that protein is called as insecticidal protein now protein is inactive that's why that inactive protein is not harming the bacteria itself now what happens is for example a mosquito or any other for you know uh, insect when it actually attacks that plant so what happens is that uh, inact insecticidal inactive protein gets into the gut of the insect in, into the elementary canal of the insect and due to the alkaline ph of the elementary canal of the insect itself the insecticidal protein which was an inactive form outside now becomes active and you can imagine once the insecticidal is the name suggests only insecticidal means killing an insect so once the insecticidal protein becomes active it means it's going to real harm the insect itself what it does is 
now i explained you three three terms the first was foregut second was midgut and the third was hindgut right so uh, the the you know the protein is actually going to uh, you know you can say harm the midgut of the insect how it will create small small pores into the midgut now you can imagine you have your midgut and there are pores into it then there will be a lot of physiological uh, you know you can say harms to your body similarly when the midgut is affected it means that there it will lead to cell inflammation that is cell swelling and ultimately the cell will rupture the cell will die and that is called your uh, you know and that will actually lead to the death of the insect the so similar thing what i have written is over here that bt toxin is present in bacillus thuringiensis bacteria and that bacteria contains a protein which is insecticidal protein now insecticidal protein is actually present in inactive form and when an insect attacks the plant so due to alkaline ph of the elementary canal of the insect the toxin becomes active and then the toxin makes pores into the midgut of the insect due to which the cell swells and cell die and the insect ultimately get killed okay so this is the whole physiology of the uh, you know of making a plant insect resistant so similarly with the application of this bt toxin we have uh, introduced this bt toxin into many plants for example uh, we have bt cotton okay and the other things also so the choice of genes now this bt toxin you know it was actually present into a gene because what we are doing is we are introducing genes only right so what we did is we you know every uh, gene is different for the other for the every insect or from you know based on the plant whatever plant we have for example right now we had cotton but at the same time we can have the other uh, useful plant other medicinal plant also so whatever toxin what we are introducing that toxin is encoded by a gene which is called cry c r y remember this thing which can come into the question as a question into your neat exam so the gene which encodes the tox toxin is called cry gene now there are lot of cry genes what are available into market that is cry 1 ac cry 2 ab which control cotton ball worms ball worms means they are again pest which actually attack your cotton plant whereas cry 1 ab controls corn borer okay so i am just giving you a brief about yesterday's class over here i hope you all remember this now guys over here again i would like to introduce that see if you remember and if you agree with me then in biology itself we have 38 chapters available so out of those 38 chapters you know at least uh, you know we need three or four classes for each chapter to complete so you can imagine in yourself if we are providing 90 plus classes to you guys it means that yes we are covering the whole syllabus for you all okay so we are providing multiple classes to you and what you have to do is just open youtube and join our course join our uh, video okay then we secondly what we have is convenient educational platform yes so we are organizing our classes through our youtube channel only and everybody these days has an access for, to youtube okay because you have smartphone you have laptops and from any device you can join our youtube channel right next is guys we are also providing flipped classroom method in flipped classroom method you would understand that we are providing an online method to you all so that you can study the same way as you do study in your schools right we provide you the whole theory of the chapter and then we also provide you the questions hi guys i can see viewers are joining in so can i just have your names and hi from your side okay so next thing uh, we also you know there is a syllabus from je and neat experts yes so basically we all are professionals we all are faculties over here so we are you know we have an, we have excelled in our fields and whatever pdfs whatever study material we are going to create we will include all of our knowledge you know into that pdf so that you can have everything in your hands then last we have doubt solving practice like i said once we all the chapters will be covered once uh, you know you will all be prepared well for your exam then we will also start doing uh, you know doubt solving practice for example if you have any doubt in physics chemistry or biology what you have to do is just join the webinar which will be live over that time 
and yes uh, all of your doubts will be solved instantly okay so okay next what we have is now previously i discussed how to make a plant insect resistant now how we can make a plant pest resistant there is an another method also which is a biotechnological method itself so you would have heard of one thing which is called rna interference have you all heard of it it is a chapter which is actually mentioned in your uh, you know biotechnology chapter in ncert what is rna interference see rna interference is a type of process you know in which let me explain you in detail for example there was a parasite for example let us take nematode okay the name of the nematode was uh, you know meloidigyne incognitia and that actually attacked the roots of the tobacco plant okay there is a plant uh, which which plant it is tobacco plant and the roots have been attacked by that uh, you know you can see the nematode so what will what will happen basically it will harm the roots and the roots will die so that the plant will ultimately die due to deprivation of water and minerals so in order to prevent that what the process what we are following these days is rna interference into that process what we are doing is we are injecting or introducing a foreign dna okay the dna which is actually manipulated in the laboratory and how we are introducing that dna into the uh, you can say into the plant itself uh, you know into the uh, you, you into the pest we are doing it through the uh, vectors okay we have viruses we have retroviruses and viruses have a capability to infect very instantly okay so we uh, just you know uh, like infect the host uh, you can say infect the pest with the help of those retroviruses those vectors and we are actually introducing the dna into their body now once the dna will reach up there the dna will uh, you know form two types of strands that is called sense strand and anti sense strand okay let me explain you what is anti sense and what is sense anti sense strand of the dna will actually go for transcription okay whereas sense strand will not go for the transcription so as you can see there are sense and anti sense anti sense so they are uh, opposite to each other they are complementary to each other so what they will produce is after translation they will produce double stranded rna okay like dna uh, split into two that is sense and anti sense and those together formed double stranded rna which is called ds rna now ultimately what will happen that ds rna will suppress the action of the messenger rna of the pest pest means uh, let us say uh, you know the the nematode what we are talking about okay so that double stranded dna will will uh, you know <clears throat> you can say suppress the action of the messenger rna and messenger rna will not undergo transcription and translational processes that process is called as silencing okay silent means we are making the messenger rna silent so that nothing will be able to work okay no transcription no translation will happen so this whole process is what we call as rna interference okay so i hope you all got it what we are doing is we are you know uh, basically introducing a vector dna into the you can say nematode after that nematode what we are doing now the dna will form two strands the first will be sense and second will be anti sense now these two together what we what they will form is double stranded rna this double stranded rna it will uh, you can say you know it will actually associate with what mrna mrna of what mrna of the mrna of the pest itself that is the nematode and once this mrna will be suppressed by this dna that is called your silencing part okay so what will happen the actions of this mrna will get stopped now once the action will get stopped it means there will be transcription and translation d 
these processes will get hampered so they will not occur into the body of the nematode and that's why the nematode will ultimately get die because if there is no dna formation it means the cells are getting killed and ultimately the nematode will die so this is the process of your rna i that is rna interference just keep this process in mind and you will be able to answer all the mcqs whatever will be asked from you in your neat exam okay so this is the process of rnai rnai and rna silencing okay you can also see i i have mentioned everything into my ppt so in rnai generally the vector dna is introduced in the pest that is the nematode the vector DNA then copies the machinery of the pest and make two types of different strands namely sense and antisense strand. Since both the strands are complementary to each other that is what I said one is sense and other is antisense so they are complementary and what they will make is they will make a double stranded RNA which is dsRNA. This dsRNA actually suppresses the function of the mRNA or the pest and then stop the transcriptional and translation processes which is called as silencing okay so the whole process i already explained you and as i told you that there is an example in which we are actually uh, you know using this method so the method is called as you know you, the example is roots of the tobacco plant by a nematode called as me melodigain in cognitia okay so now we have also the biotechnological applications in the field of, of you know therapeutics that is medicines how we can do it we have produced genetically engineered insulin now what is that now guys if you understand you would have seen so many patients even around you like i have my mother who is actually on insulin who is having type 1 diabetes type 1 diabetes means that she is insulin de dependent her body does not produce enough insulin or her body's uh, insulin is not able is not in you know is incapable of you know uh, utilizing the glucose levels by the blood so basically a type 1 diabetic patient has to have insulin from the external from the outside sources how can they have that what is the source previously the insulin was prepared from the slaughtered cattle and pigs but you can imagine that those are cattle and pigs you know like they can eat anything they want so due to those due to that the insulin what was prepared that insulin was sometimes allergic to some patients some patient body showed very you know adverse physiological responses in order to you know in response to that so just to prevent this uh, you know this allergy part now the insulin what is being prepared is biotechnologically engineered how now if you would just reconsider the process the shape or the structure of insulin so in insulin we have two types of polypeptide chain polypeptide chain means chain of you know amino acids are joined by disulfide bonds into that okay so you can see there is one chain chain a let us say it is a chain a I am talking about immature insulin. Now there are two types of insulin, immature and mature. So immature insulin means that the insulin has two polypeptide chains, chain A and chain B. Whereas there is another chain which is linked to these chains. Okay. And that chain is called C peptide. Okay. Now due to this formation, the C peptide actually does not take participation in you know activation of the insulin. So this is inactive or you can say pro hormone inactive insulin or you can say this is a pro hormone pro hormone means a hormone which actually is not you know uh, came into action as of now so uh, this is what i tried to explain this is a process this is a structure of immature insulin and since there is a presence of c peptide is over here so this C peptide needs to be, uh, you know, extracted. These chains need to be extracted and they need to be joined. And how are they joined? They are joined by disulfide bonds. Okay. Now what happens in order to manipulate this insulin in a laboratory, what we do is 
two polypeptide chains are produced which are complementary to the chain A and B. Now we produce two polypeptide chains which are actually same in structure and function to the chain A and B of the insulin. Now those chains are actually administered or introduced into E. coli that is Escherichia coli bacteria and in that uh, the chains are able to make a copies of themselves and the chain actually finally becomes chain A and chain B of your insulin. Once chain A and chain B are produced, they are extracted from the bacteria and then they are linked together with the help of disulfide bonds. So from immature insulin, immature insulin minus C peptide chain will, uh, will produce your mature or active insulin. Okay. That is the active form. So through this procedure, we can actually create the active form of the insulin. And then this insulin in the form of medicines, in the form of injections is available into markets where the patients are uh, able to have this and they can regulate their insulin levels in the body. Why is insulin is important? Because insulin is uh, the one, insulin is the hormone which is actually responsible for the uptake of the glucose by the blood. Okay by the cells because if glucose will remain in blood only then it will uh, lead to increased blood sugar levels that is called diabetes so in diabetic patient the glucose has to be uptaken by the cells of the body and how is it possible once these cells uh, once the glucose will get uptaken by the cells and how is it possible with the help of insulin that is the external insulin in case of diabetes patients I am talking about diabetes mellitus. Just remember this. There are two types of diabetes which we have. Diabetes insipidus and diabetes mellitus. Diabetes insipidus is a disease which is actually caused by antidiuretic hormone which is a totally different uh, concept over here. But diabetes mellitus means that's in simple words what we call as sugar. Okay. Sugar disease. Yes. Yeah, so now secondly what we had is gene therapy. In gene therapy we have you know, uh, in gene, through gene therapy, we can actually improve or we can, uh, you know, cure the genetic defects in a develop, developing embryo or an individual. How? There was an example which is also mentioned in your NCERT book in which it is, uh, it, which is clearly written that there was a four years old girl and that girl had a disease or had, uh, you know, uh, you can say a disorder which was uh, adenosine deaminase deficiency syndrome. What was that is uh, adenosine deaminase deficiency. Okay, what is this? This is the enzyme. As you can see, there is the A's word is coming in the last three letters. So A's means this is an enzyme. Okay, so basically this was an enzyme which is lacking into the body of the girl and due to this enzyme the immune system is suppressed. It means whatever pathogens will attack the body the immune system will not able to tolerate them and the girl will get sick instantly. The girl will be very much sensitive to those pathogens. So due to uh, the immune system suppressed and due to this deficiency the gene the external uh, you know external enzymes because this is an enzyme the enzyme was given to the girl but externally like it was prepared in laboratory and then it was injected into the girl okay so this was nothing but the gene therapy only so that that's why the girl was able to uh, you know tolerate the immune responses and she was also able to tolerate the attacks by the pathogens okay so but there is one thing over here which has to be mentioned that these injections or these gene therapy was to be taken you know regularly because uh, it is not like that one only one time you will take it and it will last uh, long forever no you have to take it regularly okay this is you can say a limitation of the gene therapy so this was uh, you know about the gene therapy then third what we have is Molecular diagnosis. In molecular diagnosis, we had discussed two types of tests what we have. When we are talking about gene, uh, you know, uh, you can, when we are talking about molecular diagnosis, it means we are talking about the, uh, the manipulation of the genes only. 
so we have two things pcr and alisa pcr means polymerase chain reaction and alisa is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay just remember the full forms guys these can also come into your exam now let me explain you what is pcr and what is alisa in pcr we take us uh, you know we take a part of the gene then we actually grow the copies of that gene uh, in the laboratory itself now once we are making a whole colony of the gene that is called the gene pool from that pool we are taking a small portion of the gene and we are actually uh, monitoring that that uh, portion okay that small part and what we are monitoring is if there is any gene defect if there will be any then we will correct it right there and then with the help of genetic engineering but on the other hand elisa what is elisa in elisa we are uh, actually introducing some antigens into the body of the host and uh, in in you know in response to those antigens antibodies will be formed and those antibodies will can can be monitored laboratorily in order to uh, check if there is any genetic defect in the body of the individual okay so there are the two tests in uh, further what we have is presence of a pathogen is absolutely necessary in order to produce these tests because yes as i told you we are uh, you know we are introducing the external antigens and antigens can only be carried by the pathogens only so these are the pathogens we use and now due to very low concentration of the bacteria symptoms of the disease are not yet visible but they can be detected by application of their nucleic acid which is called pcr okay polymerase chain reaction so what happens is a single stranded dna or rna tagged with a radioactive molecule that is probe is allowed to hybridize to its complementary dna this is a process which actually describes your pcr how is the pcr process works so we have a single stranded dna in that dna what we are doing is we are tagging that dna with a radioactive molecule that is called a probe and we are allowing that strand to uh, produce a complementary dna of itself okay and then it uh, you know furthermore it uh, leads to cloning of the cells okay now what happen when we are doing auto radiography it means we are examining that uh, you know the strand the complementary strand and everything so we will what we check is the clone what is being produced they will have the mutated gene and hence that gene will not appear on your auto radiographic or photographic film and because why it is not getting uh, visible over there because the probe which we had used that is radioactive molecule that will not be complementary with your mutated gene so you know in order to just because of this process we will be able to find that yes there is some mutation in the gene is going on and we have to correct that mutation okay we have to uh, get that pathogen out of the body so that the host or the individual can can be fit okay so elisa is based on the principle of antigen antibody interaction infection by pathogen can be detected by the presence of antigens only so now let us discuss the topic which is transgenic animals transgenic animals means those animals whose gene has been manipulated in laboratory or in any other method to any other method in we are only talking about animals this time that's why we are uh, you know taking the term transgenic animals okay so you can see their dna or their their gene is manipulated so we have transgenic rats rabbits pig sheep cows and fish and although 95% of all existing transgenic animals are mice so mice are a great you know my mice uh, are the greatest in number which are used transgenically into the, uh, you know for our own examinations now reasons for these transgenic animals are produced for human welfare first will be normal physiology and development see in order to check if whatever reactions are going on into our body whatever physiology whatever treatment what we are going to do for any disease first we have to check the physiology for example if i am giving you a vaccine if i am if you are taking any medicine that medicine will bring about some reaction some chemical reaction into your body you have to understand that those chemical reactions are either going to be harmful or beneficial in order to cure your disease how will you be able to do that first that uh, vaccine or that medicine should be tested upon the transgenic animals right 
so only then you are able to uh, you know check whether this medicine is suitable or not so some genes are designed to carry out a specific function like insulin like growth factors in ins insulin we have insulin like growth factors which actually promote growth and glucose uptake by the body so study of disease many transgenic animals are designed to increase our understanding of how genes contribute to development of genes also whenever we are studying about any disease so we are using these transgenic animals as a source for example if there is any for example uh, you know any disease is occurring into the body of the human so we cannot test on a human because it can lead to severe uh, condition of the disease but the same genes will be extracted from the human and then they will be introduced into the transgenic animal that is mice and everything and then see why we are cause we can also use normal animals but why we are using transgenic because transgenic animals show a great sensitivity to those disease causing organisms or pathogens okay and since uh, we have to get the results real soon that's why we are using transgenic because they sh they are very they are more sensitive to the pathogens so they will show the results very quickly right agar hum kisi transgenic animal ko infect karenge kisi pathogen ke sath so due to their high sensitivity they will show the results more quickly and we will be able to cure we will be able to make the treatment for that disease you know according to the time okay so that's why we are also using it studying of the disease then today's transgenic model exists for many human diseases such as cancer we have transgenic animals testing uh, done upon by the you know uh, for cancer cystic fibrosis rheumatoid arthritis and alzheimer's disease in alzheimer disease there is a loss of brain cells due to which the brain functioning gets hampered okay then biological products in biological products how can we uh, use the transgenic animals because for example uh, the human medicines required to treat certain human diseases can contain biological products but such products are often expensive to make yes there are expense there are products which are available which can be used as medicines but those products are very expensive so transgenic animals they produce that produce useful biological products can be created by the introduction of the portion of dna or the gene which codes for a specific for a particular product such as human protein used to treat emphysema okay so basically transgenic animals sometimes they have a certain type of gene which can be useful in order to treat the disease in order to give us a biological product and uh, for example there is a human protein called alpha 1 antitrypsin okay this uh, gene or this protein is available in a in the transgenic animal in the form of a gene we can extract that gene and we can introduce into ourselves into the patient so that certain type of physiological disease can be cured or treated for example in emphysema we, there is a, a you know infection in the lungs so due to uh, with the help of this human protein alpha 1 antitrypsin we can treat that emphysemal disease okay next we have in 1997 the first transgenic cow okay we had a we had made a cow which was transgenic that is we manipulated their genes the name of the cow was rosy uh, now what the cow did is it produced human protein enriched milk 2.4 grams per liter it means the amount of the protein was in 1 liter of milk it was 2.4 grams of proteins available the milk contained the human alpha lactalbumin which was nutritionally a more balanced product for human babies than natural cow milk absolutely why we are giving our uh, you know why we why we are supposing the mother to breastfeed a child for at least 6 months because so that the child can get a uh, protein uh, you know also some antibodies from the mother right so now there are some diseases in the mother the mother is not able to efficiently you know uh, like you can say fulfill the demands of a child when it comes to milk so uh, you know just in order to uh, provide more protein more nutrition you know we uh, basically manipulated the genes of this cow and then why because this cow's milk contained human alpha lactalbumin what is this it is basically you can see uh, you know a protein which forms or which increases the lactose into your milk lactose is a sugar and lactose 
let us uh, you know see over here i have also written it you can see the lacto sugar levels in the milk of the animal now uh, now there are some people you know who are called as lactose intolerant lactose intolerant you would also have heard of this term what is that that means that the lactose sugar which is present in the milk which it cannot be digested by the you know digestive system of the some of some human beings and due to that you know they can develop diarrhea that is you know fluid uh, you can say you know uh, like passing out <clears throat> the fecal matter in as in the form of water and bloating gas issues they can all have this when they have dairy products so these people are called lactose intolerant just remember this term then we have vaccine safety what is vaccine uh, safety what is the use of transgenic animals like i said for example i am going to develop a vaccine let us say covid 19 vaccine what we had few days back so just in order to you know uh, test the vaccine whether it's going to be successful over a human or not since the mice physiological functions are similar to the human beings so we tested the vaccine over the mice first right so so that the whatever harmful uh, you know <clears throat> whatever harmful physiology what we uh, what we can see we will be able to see it in the mice itself that is uh, we will be protected whereas we will be able to also check whether the vaccine will be harmful or beneficial in order to treat the disease okay so the transgenic mice are being used to test the safety of the polio vaccine also if successful they are fine to be reliable they could replace the use of monkeys to test the safety of batches of the vaccine so as i said they are transgenic monkeys also but see monkeys uh, you know monkeys reproduce just like as human whereas mice can reproduce you know differently so mice can mice are greater in number so it will be more helpful if we will take mice as a you know you can say as a test subject whereas uh, monkeys you know we can decrease the amount of monkeys used in the laboratory okay so transgenic mice uh, can be formed transgenic animals that may made uh, carry genes which make them more sensitive to toxic substances okay now what we had is ethical issues we are facing in biotechnology so see now what would happen there is a one term which is called which is called biopiracy let me just write it for you over here biopiracy what is biopiracy in biopiracy uh, it means that there are multinational companies which means there are some companies which come from us or abroad or any other country and they come in uh, you know they come into some one nation for example in india and what they will do is they will see a variety they will manipulate the variety of that crop and then or crop or any other animal or organism present on in india they will produce some beneficial product out of that and then they will patent it what is patent it means that no one will be no one will have the access to you know recreate that biological product also the there are very much you know uh, limitations or you can say restrictions when somebody patents some product that is nobody can sell that product without the uh, you know without the permission of the uh, user without the permission of the person who has actually uh, you know created that patent over the product so biopiracy was nothing but it was actually see since the product was found from india but the people were us or abroad people so, and they are pat they are uh, creating a patent over the product it means even the indian people will not have the authority to sell that product without their permission right also whatever products india will make uh, you know with the same gene with the same crop they will have to sell to uh, those people as well who have created the patent so this was just unfair this was very unfair for the farmers this was unfair for the other you know uh, people who were actually dealing with that product so biopirus biopiracy is a term used for those people or those companies who actually do these kind of things they come into into the other nation they recreate some other product with the help of biotechnological tools and they patent it for their own benefit so this is this is an unfair practice and this needs to be eradicated so this term is called as biopiracy now the indian government and the government of the other nations as well they have what they have said is that this uh, patent you know they have just uh, overruled some uh, you know some laws that is uh, you know even the 
people who actually have available have that source available to their nation they can freely sell that product without the permission of the person who has actually patented it okay so this was all about this was the ethical issues we can face in biotechnological processes so guys this was all about uh, you know the biotechnology chapter i had discussed even the previous session what i had taken uh, for this chapter and uh, you know apart from that we had discussed uh, transgenic animals and ethical issues so i hope that you guys had enjoyed my webinar and you were able to get something out of that i i tried my best to explain but still if you if you you know think that there were there were some topics or there were some concepts which need to be clarified just mention that in the chat box and i'll surely do that for you all okay i'll try my best to improve myself from the next session onwards so thank you so much guys it was uh, my pleasure to just teach you and yes you can all visit our website you can just join our telegram and whatsapp group and from there you can go through the subscription plans and you can purchase them accordingly thank you so much students and we will meet in the next webinar so this is pratik shrastogi signing off and best of luck